Jesus Savior that we know. And we need to get, go came back together. Is this not Savior that we know? And they refuse to take the word. And that is what has been keeping people. That has been what has been doing what? Keeping people behind. They are looking for somebody that will come down from heaven. They are, you know, the early, the early place that we read said, this, 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 in those days, manna came down from heaven. The one Moses gave. It came down from heaven. So they, you are expecting a preacher that will come down from heaven <laughs> to come and preach to you. Say this one we know. Is this not the son of Joseph? If, is this not the son of Brenda? <laughs> you will preach. Amen. And the world will hear your voice. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You are looking for something strange. You are looking. You know they have already marked that this. You know, something that they are expecting, they're expecting somebody that will come, they will wear the big gown and the long cap, all those hats and those, and they carry big stuff. They have set up their mind, they have prepared their mind, and they have done what? They have manufactured this image in their heart. And the image has become what has become an idol to them. That without anything else, they cannot do it. Without, with no, without something like what they have in their heart, like the picture they have painted in their heart, they don't accept it. Haven't you seen the believers, the Christian, rising up? going against the men of God because it is not what they have painted in their heart, because it is not what they have manufactured in their heart, because it is not what they have created. They have created their own God. They have created their own, their own preacher. They have created their own pastors. They have created how a word, the word of God should be preached. They have created their own doctrine. And anything out of that, they are not accepting it. Today, the bread of life is available. And whosoever tastes of it shall never, never want again. In the mighty name of Jesus, I say the bread of life is available. Whosoever that will taste of it today will never, never want in the mighty name of Jesus. But listen, Jesus therefore answered and said to them, Do not murmur among yourself. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up at the last day. So you that has been murmuring, you that has been, you murmur, you talk, you have done this and that, Keep on doing it. But the word of God saying, do not murmur among yourself. Do not murmur among yourself. You that is saying, I'm not going there. You are not the one. My father who is in heaven has not done what? Has not put it in his plan for you to be here. You are saying I'm not going there. No, you are not the one that is saying that I'm not going there. God knows the reason that does not want you to be here. He said no one can come to me, unless the Father who sent me draws him. God did not draw you to Shekinah glory. 
So when you are making noise that you are not coming to Shekinah glory, it is not you. May God did not draw you to Shekinah glory. For those that God has drawn to Shekinah glory, far and wide, when they hear the name of Shekinah glory, they run coming because they know and God has drawn them to Shekinah glory. So when you refuse, when you say, I'm staying back, let anything that is happening at the Sun City happen. No, God did not draw you to Sun City for you to come and worship at Shekinah glory. Stay back because when destruction comes, he will meet you there. God doesn't want the destruction to come and meet you at Shekinah glory. And then they will say at Shekinah glory, this is what before this particular person. No, remain there. Because God did not want that plan of the enemy to manifest while you are in Shekinah glory. That's why God will not draw you. Already, God has already destined you to what you have programmed yourself to. That's why you remain there. For those God wants, God draws them to themselves. Say, so do not murmur among yourself. You are saying, I will see what is happening at the sub city. I'm not going there. If I'm not going there, I will see what will happen. No. And you are even standing to tell people not to come there. No, you are just doing your work. That is the work of the devil. You are doing the work of your master. So when you are doing the work of your master, the devil, who will stop you? Keep on doing it. And that work of your master, what will come after that? Destruction. <laughs> As you are doing the work of the devil, don't forget that destruction awaits you. Amen. So stop murmuring. Do not murmur. Stop. Do not murmur among yourself. How long have you murmured? How long have you gathered people and be talking about it? How long have you gathered people and be discussing about it? That people should not be going to church. How long have you gathered in your local community? You have been talking to people. Ah, no need for people to go to church. No need for people to accept Jesus. Let's go back to worship idol. How long have you been campaigning? How long have you been evangelizing for the idol? What has come up upon you? Don't worry. The evil, the destruction that awaits you, no one will be able to rescue you. It's the truth and the plain truth. God did not draw you to this place. So why are you more? Why the momo? God did not draw you to go to church. Why do you momo? God did not ask you to go to church. You are doing the work of the devil. Keep doing it because destruction awaits you. If you don't do the work of the devil, how will somebody see that there are some people doing evil and run to Christ? You are doing the work while others are running to Christ because of your evil work. So when you are doing the evil work, the devil has programmed you to be doing that. God has not drawn you to himself yet. So keep on doing but destruction awaits you. And you keep on failing. They keep on failing. Because when they try it, it doesn't work. When they cut that, they plan it. It did not work out as they were planning. It didn't work out. And you don't ask yourself, why is this thing not working out? I plan to stop them. And it didn't work out. Why is it not working out? Don't ask. But hear what the scripture says in Isaiah chapter 7. It said, Thus says the Lord God, it shall not stand, nor shall it come to pass. When you are of the devil, your plan will not do what? It will not stand, neither will it come to pass. You will continue to be a failure, a failure at all times, a failure. A fool. Imagine you fooling yourself around. And you are thinking that you are fooling others. Stop 
fooling yourself. So when they see you, if the devil could have tempted the bread himself, you the eater, you the carrier, you the wearer of this bread, how much, how long will you continue to take that the devil will not tempt you? If you are there, you can read. Louder a bit. And when the tempter came to And when the tempter, hey, let, let me let, let me make you understand. There are some people in that class. There are some people in that category. They are what? The tempters. There are some people called the tempters. They are in that category. Let me go and tempt him to see. If this is Christianity, is genuine, let me go and tempt him to see if this her God is genuine. Let me go and tempt her to see if he is truly a child of God. Let me go and tempt him to see if he is powerful as I thought. Let me go and tempt him to see if he has really if he has truly given his life for Christ, the tempters, read up. He said, he said if, thou be the son of God, if you are the Son of God, command these stones, command these stones be made bread. to become bread. If you are the Son of God, he knows that he is the Son of God. Because if he didn't know, he would have said, if you are the son of God. So how can you see somebody? Okay, you see me and you are asking me if you are the son of your father. What? What do you try to bring out? It's like, it's like meeting 
somebody, if truly, if you are a son of your father, speak in the language of your father. Or maybe that one is a little bit too far. If, if you are the son of your father, spell your father's name. The tempter. And you might look at it as if it is very easy. I sit on my father's name. Let me begin to spell. Spell what? Didn't he know that you are the son of your father? That's why Jesus, even though these things were very simple things, he didn't apply to eat. So when the tempter comes, it doesn't matter how little it looks, it doesn't matter, you know, how these things look very easy to do. You don't need to do what? To assert. You don't need to do what? You don't need to follow his tomb because he knows where he's leading you to. A certain man of God went somewhere to have a meeting with a man, with a certain people, group of people, and they told him, ah, drink, bishop, drink. Ah, he said, no, I don't want to drink. He said, bishop, drink is only few of us here. Mm -hmm. Nobody will know. <laughs> okay, he said, bishop, you can just turn it in your cup, then we remove the bottle. And Bishop accepted and turned it, they removed the bottle. And the next moment, you are the one carrying about that Bishop. I think he's, he's a man of God. I thought he's a man of God. He drank alcohol. If you just pour it in the cup and remove the bottle, he will drink it. Amen. Amen. So it doesn't matter how they furnish it. It doesn't matter how they use the sweet word to garnish it. It doesn't matter how they serve it. It doesn't matter how they present it. But Jesus answered and said, It is written, Man shall not leave my bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. That is the very reason you have to live by the word. You have to live by the word. You don't have to live by the propagandas of the people. You don't have to live by what people are saying. You don't have to live by their own, according to their own imagination. They will always come to tempt you. Do you have the bread of life in your life? The tempter will always come to tempt you to know if really you know the value. For Jesus Christ, the tempter did not just go to him once. He did not just go to him once. So if you overcome the first temptation, it does not mean that the temptation has all gone. When you have, you know, when you overcome the first temptation, or the second temptation, it doesn't mean that the temptation is finished. The tempt you know, the tempter is awaiting for you. They are going to re-strategize. Another person is coming up with another kind of temptation. Are you not? Remember what they told Peter when he was in that fireplace. Are you not? You know, when they used the word, are you not? You know, they try to give you a reason, you know, to do what? To defend yourself. It's either they just put you in a very tight corner for you to say yes or no. And if you say yes, they will hook you. And if you say no, that means you will free from the city, you know, from that very angle. And they will place you in that corner in order for you to deny Jesus, just like Peter denied it on that very day. Are you not the one that used to worship and shake in glory? And you said, leave. Are you not? Are you not worshiping me again? I know you are not. And you say, I'm not. Already they have done what they have wanted to do. They have bring in the world to do what? To lure you into their camp. To the camp of the enemy. And that was what they did. Are you not the one that used to follow Jesus Christ? 
that said, no, I'm not the one. And they say, okay, that's good. They have already done one. They have already, they have already completed their, their, their mission, mission number one. And they come again, are you not the man that used to follow him? You know, Peter says, no, I'm not the one. Just the same thing is happening today. You know, I remember you see a sister that will say, Are you ah you didn't you go to church? Are you not still worshiping in that church at Goshikaya? You say, No, I'm not worshiping there. Uh, perhaps at that very place, ah, what happened when you are not worshiping there? Um, he said, mm, don't don't worry, leave them, leave them, leave them. He said, I told you, I told you, you have already given them the opportunity to to do what? To uh, to, to speak evil, to do their work. Their work is to speak evil. Their work is to do, you know, to, to, to make those negative utterances. You have given them the opportunity and I told you. Didn't I tell you? And that settled the matter. God did not draw you to, to himself. So even though you try to force yourself to him, you will do what? You will remain where you are. To everyone that God has drawn to himself, when one is missing, God go about looking for that particular one. He said, I will leave the 99 and look for the missing one. Mm. So if you are not being looked for, that means you are not even among the numbers. Amen. Amen. And I pray upon your life today, wherever you are, or as you are receiving this word today, as you are receiving Jesus Christ back into your life today, May it quicken you. May it quicken you on every side. In the mighty name of Jesus. I say, may it quicken you on every side. In the mighty name of Jesus. Little temptation you fall. Little temptation you fall. Little temptation you fall apart. Today, as you revisit him, as you come to him, he said, come unto me and you obey and come unto him. I upon your life that he will quicken you. He will quicken your steps. He will quicken your body. He will quicken your mortal body. He will quicken your spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. So whatsoever that has been stopping you from getting to the point where the bread of life is being served to the point where you can get the bread of life into your system. Today, let us eliminate them all. In the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to rise on your feet as we begin to pray. Because we are going to pray. These people that crumble, these people, this set of crumblers, you know, this set of people, this, they are deceivers. They are there waiting. They are, they are there. They are the people that that lay, lay traps for people to fall. And they are waiting for any Christian to fall in and they will hold the person in there so that the person will not be able to rise. They are everywhere. I said they are everywhere. Amen. 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 Why don't you come to him? This is the bread of life. This is the bread of life. Why don't you come to him? The time has come for you to draw nearer. The time has come for you to come unto him. The time has come for you to leave whatsoever they are doing. Whatsoever that has been keeping you. The time has come for you to leave those things and run to him. So that you may be saved, so that you may be delivered, so that you may be taken out from that captivity, so that you will be taken out, out of that situation, out of that hardship, out of that pain, out of that sorrow. The time has come, and the time is now. The time is now. The time is now. The time is now. Wherever you are hearing this word, I said the time.